Welcome back, everybody, to another traits game. Uh, quick synopsis for anyone who is just jumping in now. Uh, the traits game is a art game where we have three rounds. First round, we hand off a character and a list of traits to every single individual. Everyone gets their own unique set of traits, but everyone gets the same exact character, and they're tasked with modifying the character using those traits. Second round, after I get everyone's arts back, I redistribute those new arts around with a new set of traits, but this time they only add in one of those traits. Once all that's done, they hand it back to me, I redistribute a third time, and the artists now have to guess the traits used for the character. Lawrence. This is the first male character that we've done for the traits game, and I still gave them a rather feminine form. I swear I'll do a proper male character at some point. Uh, most of the time I want these characters to kind of be, you know, rather simple just so that people have a lot of stuff to like add, develop, and grow on the character, but I couldn't resist the idea of a peacock, so we made it a little bit more detailed than usual. I think with the end result though, Lawrence has like a lot of uh, a lot of space to still add in quite a few new things and has a lot of uh, possibilities to adapt and change items. The prissy nature on the ref, I always like to give some some type of personality and just to like give a pose idea or whatnot if they can't come up with anything. But uh, as we're going to see, that really didn't come up super often here in the game this week. Let's see what they do. First up, we have Masao. They were given Holy, Scarred, and Voodoo, of which they added in all three. In fact, everyone added all three of their traits. First time that's happened, and I'm actually really excited for that. So, yeah. All the traits I see listed out, all of them were animated. Moving on, this is a fantastic start to the game. Holy cow. I really, really love the painterly style with the line work to give it like a nice texture and contrast, things like that. Scarred and Voodoo being merged together into pins and stitches has me a little bit concerned that one or the other might get lost, but the old way, school way of doing like holy as a halo of light around their head, while it doesn't integrate into the rest of the design too much, I definitely feel like it's straightforward enough and should carry on really, really easily. Uh, super, 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 super good art and a great start again. This piece was headed off to Delmi, who added royalty from their list to the character. They saw the stitches and pins and knew to keep them going. They definitely saw those as the really, really important stuff. But the design is actually a lot less tortured, like the beak is no longer forced shut and keeping, you know, the other eye and such. Overall, the design is maintained pretty well, and not only did they add in the classic royal cape and crown, they also polish up the pins across the body, making it like, you know, redeemed and esteemed and just like this nice fancy thing. Like, you know, someone who's filled with pins and stitches suddenly becomes a, becomes a royal individual. Maybe they're gonna wanna keep that stuff kinda going. So I actually really, really appreciated that. This art was handed off to eight. Let's see if they're able to actually guess the traits correctly. They went with Royalty, Scarred, Holy, and Wounded. That's a solid showing. Three out of four is pretty dang good for the very first round. I think the Voodoo nature being just pins might have been what held it back from coming through in the end. But at the same time, there's not a lot more I can imagine doing that wouldn't also interfere with the Royalty that Delmi added in. So, you know, it was a good chance that what uh, Masao added in the beginning, Delmi might like accidentally have undid or not kept going super well. Still though, this is a fantastic start and great examples from these artists. The next round here, we have Star Knights who added in Robotic, Neon, and Dull. I said that the prissy nature doesn't really come to play too much in this game. Uh, this is pretty much the time I think it shows the most, which I think is interesting since they actually look beaten to heck and malnourished due to the colors being so faded. I feel like Neon and Robotic really tie together well, but Dull is kind of the antithesis of that. You can't really have Neon Dull or else it's not Neon anymore. And if you have like kind of a beaten down, destroyed character who's super bright, you know, it might not show so beaten down and like beat up. Uh, so what they did is they actually opted to make the character's colors the dulled part, which actually work really well. They definitely do look dulled, but this is kind of one of the more interesting things here. The shading being as bright as it is, kind of makes the colors look pink washed rather than dull. Like the only real way I could see kind of around that is maybe if like, you know, it wasn't so brightly shaded or if like maybe it was only highlighted on the edges. I'm not super certain. Uh, I bring that up because the next person that uh, got the character is Chris, Chris Sketch. 
And, as you may notice, Dole actually kind of disappeared here. They added in Magical from their list of traits, and that was a fascinating challenge. They saw the robotic parts and bright colors and went, nah, we're going to turn to magic. And that's awesome. The more floating pose helps add to the effect, and swapping out the more rough robotics or smoother ones and gems in the sockets everywhere, like, that really gives a bit of a magical girl vibe. Like, I don't know if it's just that or what, but like, also the robotics uh, for the tail feathers kind of give me a bit of a skirt vibe too. Maybe it's just like the angle of them next to the hips, I don't know. However, uh, they were definitely, definitely thrown off by the dull thing of it. But at the same time, I mean, all the bright colors gave a huge magical pop, so that could have easily been a case of like, you know, they didn't recognize that as dull. They just wanted it to be brighter than before. I, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely could go either way. Uh, but definitely feel like Dole's probably not going to last through the end of this one. Chris's piece was handed over to Applesmith, who guessed Neon, Magenta, Futuristic, and Flights. You know, thinking on it, robotic and magical can definitely be seen as futuristic. You know, sufficiently advanced technology and all that. The only thing I could see improved is maybe Star to have altered the character colors a bit more. Like, turn them into maybe, like, even more monotone or adjust them rather than kind of, like, reducing the saturation all then. Maybe that would help out. Maybe it's, like, the pink shading layer on top kind of threw that off a bit more than it really should have. I definitely think both of these arts are really, really good. Uh... But as with this game, sometimes the really good arts don't always get all the traits through in the end. But we'll take our one out of four and roll with it into the next round. Positive Patience is here, and they have a unfortunate trait. They got Flight, Battery, and Marble for their design. Flight and Battery got turned into the flying pose, and presumably it's being battery powered. I only see a small little entry bolt symbol on the pack, but that's about the limit that I can see with that influence. Marble's a fascinating addition, though. Uh, it, like, I wasn't expecting this in the slightest. It's the inside of the cloak. Like, the cloak is, like, made out of marble or just as a texture of marble. It, it, it makes me wonder, like, is it marble fabric or is it just patterned or... I have no idea, but, like, it very shows. Like, that's super, super clear to me. Uh, like, the lines emanating from the character and such and the starry background help add to, like, the flight aspect. This piece was handed over to Applesmith, and they added in Filthy from their list. Makes total sense to me, you know, dirty and unkempt and like all that on the character. I only, my only concern here is that like going to round two of this design, the marble patterning was kind of lost. Uh, Apple did recognize it and kept it in with the cloak, but the filthy kind of like hides that a bit, right? It kind of makes the marbling look a bit more like just dirt lines. I mean, you kind of can't change too much with that so with like the thing with this game is when you recognize a trait you want to keep that trait as consistent as possible and clearly apple recognized the trait i mean it's another marble batter it's super clear but like unless they went so far to like dramatically change the way that it was looking like maybe turned it into marble you know that one might like I, I don't i don't know how well marble is going to be carried forward it kind of looks like it's just turning into more dirt and grime Okay, before we get to the guesses, I gotta say something here. I don't know how this happened, like at all. It wasn't even in the same folder that I used to organize all this, but somehow I posted the wrong traits list to my community when we started the game. I didn't notice that until after someone told me about it. And by that point, this person actually already guessed the traits. Uh, and I can't like, you know, go and ask them and double check, say, hey, here's the updated list, because I would kind of tip it off that it was totally wrong. Uh, also, they were in the middle of the whole Texas crisis recently, and so I decided to just drop it and give them the point anyways. Uh, last few games, we had Oceanic and Ocean in the list, so I replaced one of them with Battery, but the guesser here didn't get the list that had Battery in it, so they never knew that that was even an option. Uh, I'm super sorry about that. Uh, let's get back to the game. Masao was handed this design and guessed Unclean, Flight, genderless and regal as their traits cloak equaling regal you know if that makes sense i can i can totally understand that unclean and filthy are two intentionally similar ones there's nuance to them but there's a lot of stuff that overlaps as well so totally fair on the confusion with that flight no brainer i mean come on genderless you know seeing the art with that in mind i can see genderless it's not quite something i would have picked out as the guesser but i can understand where it's coming from on seeing the final result 
Two out of four because of the battery mishap. I think this group got handed a rough traits list, but they definitely got some good results out of it at the end. Aetil Fox is here with entry number four. Their traits were weathered, unclean, and sweet. That's kind of a difficult list to actually work with, and I think they did pretty well with it. Weathered, you know, is them like a cane to be an exploratory type, the pose really implying a bit of wandering, you know, maybe they're in the woods looking over a clearing or just past one, holding their hand up to a tree. That's my impression with that at least, you know, they're unkempt and dirty. The color everywhere is like dripping. I could really see that being as weathered or unclean either. The cane is like dripping chocolate on themselves as well, so that's, you know, also for unclean. And speaking of, is that cane a pocky stick like or something similar i'm pretty certain i'm not super familiar with those things anymore you know chocolate dip snack of some sort and i think it's rolled in nuts I'm not super familiar with the food items so i don't know for certain if that's a thing that they do but i could totally see them doing that and you know the dripping nature of the colors and such you know might confuse a couple of people i'd like to see sweet pushed a little bit harder i definitely like this art i love this art unclean and weathered two very hard things to have together uh, the dripping nature is probably the most weathered in my mind, and then unclean as, you know, the character is super unclean and such like that. I'm fascinating to see how this one progresses. Our Novas was given this design and added in sweet because I'm an idiot and forgot to clear the list, so there's no overlap. Fuck. All right, all right, listen, listen. It's hard organizing these things. I got like nine or ten people to like piece together and like figure out who's doing what with whom and not you know, hand the wrong traits to people. Uh, and like, there's a list of, of 69 traits in a game that it changes slightly between different iterations and a bunch of folders and images to sort and just stuff slips between the cracks. And that's on me for doing so. In the end, the game is made for fun. I don't really expect people to be too upset in the comments about this. I'm not excusing myself. I just want to apologize so that I'll do better about it in the future. I'm just gonna figure out how the fuck to organize this interconnected web of artists and traits. Arnova's got handed three traits and it went with the one on it that was still in the first round, which funnily enough kind of says they didn't think sweet was a trait in the first place. I'm still gonna give them the point for my mistake. They kept the dirty look of the character and changed the nuts on the stick to be mushrooms instead. We lost the drippy nature of the pattern, maybe got a bit lost in the dirty look from 8's piece. Not really sure, I'm kind of sad to, be, to see it gone, I really like that. Like the last round, I would have loved to see the sweet nature pushed a little bit more instead of like, you know, just adding in a pop without changing the character. Those things are really hard to do though. Like, how would you make the character scream sweet and dirty, not unless you turn into like a Willy Wonka-esque candy monster? And it's it's a lot to ask some people. I mean, I appreciate what they were able to do with the character though. This was handed off to Kitsuna and they guessed sweet, hungry, fungi, and forest. This was a dumpster fire for the last couple of rounds, wasn't it? Sweet. Yeah. Why else would there be a lollipop in the piece? You know, hungry is probably due to the fact that they're eyeing at the pop like it's their last ration. Funky is definitely due to the mushrooms on the cane. Forest is really interesting to me. Other than the cane and kind of dirty look, I don't really see forest too much personally. Possibly a mix of the mushrooms, the cane, and the dirty look makes it seem like a forest dweller. I mentioned that vibe in the first start of this round, and I didn't think it would be strong enough to carry through to the end. Either way, I think y'all did pretty well with what you had, and I'm sorry for the mess up. Uh, that probably caused a bit of confusion. Two or four points. Chris Sketch is here again, and starting off with probably one of my favorite chains of this game. They had Pumpkin, Lit, and Rain. Pumpkin is an absolute joy when it comes up as a trait because of how much of an oddball it is and it always gets a neat result. Yeah, they're holding a pumpkin, big whoop, but they added it in to the lit nature just to make it a bit of a bomb looking item rather than just, oh, hey, look, a pumpkin. I adore when the traits aren't just added in, but mixed and interpreted in cool ways. The pattern was turned to a rain cloud and drizzle. Like, fuck, that's one of the most clever uses of a trait I've seen in one of these games. I would have liked to see the raindrops like thicker or more easily seen. Maybe have it like dripping off the character, like it's actual water. Like, I don't know, like maybe, you know, it wouldn't be so much of a pattern anymore. Maybe it just be like wet. That is like my only concern is that the raindrops aren't super, super clear. They might be a little bit hard to see in the future rounds like i keep focusing in on, on the rain here i would have loved to see the rain kind of like wrap around the arm a bit better right now it looks like it's an overlay strike through effect on the whole thing which kind of makes it feel more like a texture than it does a feather pattern absolutely great work and super super clever way to incorporate rain into the design Masao was handed this design and added an overgrown and this is why it's probably one of my favorites of this game Chris did a great job with her traits, and Masao recognized 
pretty much all of them and added in their own trait without stepping on any of the previous ones. The body was turned into this planty bird hybrid, leaves for feathers, branches for limbs, berry for the head. I mean, you can't go wrong with a lit pumpkin. I would have loved to see the pumpkinness added into the plant design in some way. This does kind of still have this Keeper of the Flame vibe going on, so I'm not really going to argue with it. I think it's still pretty good. The rain element in the pattern is a little lost, however, but they do still have this streaky look and might still carry into the guesses. Speaking of the guesses, we have positive here to guess based on Masao's piece. They went with pumpkin, makes sense, lit, a, overgrown, and blue. Dang it, I was hoping for a home run, but I can't fault blue. We might have kept rain if maybe it was raining in Masao's piece and they were guarding the pumpkin or something. It's hard to say, but like then it involves like a scene and that's really not required in any way, shape, or form for this. I really, really, really like Rain, how it was used for this, and even though we only got 3 out of 4, I count this as a massive win for this specific round. On to another great example, Applesmith was handed Lawrence and the traits Voodoo, Crystal, and oh god, Battery. Well, we're already giving a point at the end, but let's discuss it. Of course, it's nearly 70 options, but it pulls Battery multiple times. Apple went hard on the aesthetics of the Voodoo stuffs. They actually mixed up all three traits really well in the whole piece. Electricity as such, you know, being gem focused, pluses and minuses everywhere, both in the gems and in the tail, which has been turned into a cloak. And this presence of knowing what he's here for about him and like this magic he's wielding, things like that. Like if the guesser had known what battery was as an option, I don't actually know how likely they would guess what it is based on this particular one. Not many things have plus and minus intonations. So, you know, it seems like a safe bet. However, it still gives more of an energy vibe than like, battery to me, but has one more set of hands to go through. Let's see how Katsuna adds in her trait of futuristic. That trait vibes really well with the electric feel of the design already, adding in like data graphs, robotic limbs, like holographic stuffs, traces on the body, like it all, you know, it, that adds so much for futuristic. The lights going down the tail feathers is really, really neat too. Bit sad to see it turn back into feathers as a cloak was so much more voodoo to me personally, but largely Kit both maintained all the elements from the previous piece and added in her own pretty seamlessly. This piece was handed over to Star Knights, who guessed Crystal, Voodoo, Robotic, and Storm. You know, not too bad. I feel like the holographic readouts say futuristic more than robotic, but at the end of the day, they do have a lot of mechanical limbs, you know. Seeing a lack of battery, Storm makes a good replacement here, and I would not be upset at seeing that as one of the guesses for the result for this. Three out of four, that's including the same as top point in there. Definitely the other two were near misses. Great showing. AR Novas, what do you have for us? Mermaid, wounded, and blind. All right, let's see what you got. Mixing wounded and blind is a slight risk without more wounded elements on the character. You know, similar to battle damage, you know, a little bit of like, uh, like a mark on the arm or other bandages that can air into scarred if you do it. So, you know, it's a little bit of an understandable safe bet to just remove their eyes and put some gauze on the top of it. I think that mermaid is not as represented as I'd like, you know, given that it's just a tail turned into a tail fin. I think a bit more of a merfolk like fins or webbing would probably add plenty. It also gives some space to like, you know, poke holes in the fins and such it's not it's not a bad piece definitely not a bad piece at all but it's just feeling a little bit safe to me nothing really wrong with that though handing it over to eight uh yeah the randomizer actually had these two trade arts for this game that keeps happening in these games huh. eight got futuristic and added that into the design and i really really adore that the gem which was kind of out of place in the first round actually got incorporated into the second round pretty flawlessly giant gem on a stick futuristic baby we see more traces in the body and even a little hologram in their hand of like a fight going on the eyes look far less wounded now since they don't really have the implication of a blood stain almost like they're goggles maybe they have their eyesight back don't know their mermaid is a bit more lost here just because of the tail fin being turned into more dress piece rather than a fin a little bit unfortunate on that one that's not on me to judge though delmi was handed the art to guess and gave us futuristic blind red and blue a bit surprised they didn't go with magenta instead of red and blue, seeing there's a lot more pink added in, but you know, they do have like the red and blue characters in their hands. However, we still got two out of four to carry through, which, you know, I think is a pretty good deal. Almost done, just a couple more sets to go. And what good sets they are! Delmi was given Mermaid, Mad Scientist, and Stuffed. 
Gonna be honest, I think you can't really beat maniacally laughing while stitching themselves up in terms of mad scientist. Like, just look at their face. Seeing this specific set, I'm actually probably gonna change the traits list just a little bit and get rid of mermaid and merman and just make it merfolk, as the gender implications can actually throw too much of a problem when we also have gender swapped and genderless. So, you know, expect a bit of an updated list soon. I only say this because the character is still male but has a seashell bra on and that's just kind of implying a stuff that you know didn't really need to be implied and that really is just a result of mermaid being the thing. That's on me. Delmi, you did great with the design. I really love the stitch work across the body implying that like the stuffing is their insides falling out. Uh, Star Knights was given this art and added plants to it. Ever grown a plant in a stuffed mermaid peacock? Neither have I, but I like to imagine it looks something like this. Star kept all the traits in the first piece really well and had the experiment go awry and start growing out of control, literally. The hand transforming is kind of horrific and the implication of what's going to happen to their head even more so. Very mad scientist vibes. We lost the patterning down the tail and the glowing stitches, however we still have the stitches on the body, so clearly visible and I think that it'll probably be fine in the end. Chris was given Star's Arts to guess and gave us Mermaid, Plant, Stuffed, and Madman. Dang it, so close, so close again. They even had plants that have overgrown, which I was a little bit concerned about. Maybe the vial wasn't quite enough, but like without adding in a lab coat or anything, I don't think you could really get too much more mad scientist than this. Who sees a stuffed peacock mermaid in a lab coat? That's just, that's just absolutely crazy. Whatever. Still though, three out of four and with no uh, Zay messed up points. So pretty good showing. At the very end of the game here, we have Kitsuna Okami, who had Blind, Mad Scientist, and Holy as their traits. Lots of really good stuff here. Mad Scientist mixed with Holy is kind of fascinating. Have them with robotic wings and a glowing metal ring for a halo is a really cool way to incorporate both those ideas at once. Coupled with the pose being very stereotypical of like angels, you know, rising up into the sky and such, it all adds up really, really well. Plus we got the classic bottle of unknown brew ready to probably knock your world hunger. My only complaint here is that blind isn't super well visualized. We see the whited out eyes and presumably scar across the face, but they're looking at the bottle and it makes it look like they're appreciating it with their eyes. I'd love to see their eyes be like fully white or fully black or even more done with the scarring. Not for me to know though, as Kit's art was handed over to Positive Patients who added in Crystal. At least now we know what the potion does think? Is that going to cure world hunger? Maybe. Gotta say, I love the emotion of this piece. The realization that what they've done is a huge fuck up that's very, very apparent in this. There's no question what happens seeing here as there's green potion dripping from his mouth and crystals growing from it on the ground and all that. It's like with how many pieces of the wings are actually still falling, it kind of makes it look like this just happened and the crystals exploded out of them. These two pieces actually make a really great rise of power fall from grace duo. The blind elements, what little of it we had, are pretty much totally omitted from it in this piece. Maybe the crystal jutting out of the eye is kind of enough to bring blind back in? We'll see. Arnovas, you're our last guesser. Come on, bring it home for us. Holy, Crystal, Mad Scientist, Robotic. Three out of four is not bad at all for today's game. As I suspected, Blind was really a struggle to see. Robotic fits really well due to the robotic wings. I wouldn't have faulted Flight having shown up as well. Great guesses though. Holy was, you know, only the halo on this art piece and that still carried through. Nice. And that's the game. We had a surprising amount of overlapping traits, but they were almost always used and handled in very different ways. I'm insanely proud of all the artists that participated in these last few weeks. You can find links to all their stuff in the description below, as well as some info on how to do the game yourself and the rule set we used for this video. I keep saying that like the traits game is nearly done every time, but genuinely this is a nice mix of altering the characters in a short time. It's like, it's working really well. I'm a bit worried that having three traits in the first round and one more in the second might be too much, but most people seem to handle it pretty well and we got quite a few natural three out of fours, you know, and assuming I gave them the correct stuff, maybe we would have actually had some four out of fours. Uh, speaking of, we actually got a guess rate of 22 out of 36 correct. With four to guess and an extra layer of difficulty with me giving the incorrect traits list, I think that's actually a fantastic rate. Like always, we're going to be doing more of these after a couple of months, just, you know, so I don't overwhelm the artists who like to take time out of their schedule to participate. 
like comment subscribe things like that if you want to see more uh let me know down below what was actually some of your favorite pieces from this would you kind of like to see like a couple other little changes for it it's good for the youtube algorithm if nothing else and that's always appreciated though really i only do this for like the fun more than like the views and that's all i have for you today stay awesome everyone goodbye <laughs>